Hey folks, I'm here on the Texas Gulf Coast today and I'm fishing with Dustin Nichols and he is the Director of Communications for the Kayak Saltwater Series. Dustin, tell us about the Kayak Saltwater Series. Uh, Kayak Saltwater Series is an, um, it's a tournament series that you have monthly challenge events in different regions. That would be Atlantic, Gulf Coast. Um, you use a tournament management system through the app Fishing Chaos to submit your fish. You get to compete against other anglers throughout your region. Um, it's a cool deal just to get involvement in the, the, the saltwater side of the tournaments. And there is plans for live events on each in each region also, along with um, the 10, the 10 Votational, the 10. That means the top 10 anglers of the, the, the finish in that series are going to come to one big event to compete uh, for the title of the 10 champion. It's gonna be really cool. Nice. Dustin's gonna teach us a little bit about catch photo release today. Hold up your uh, your board there. Yes, That's the catch board. And this is what we measure a fish on. So we're gonna get out there and uh, catch some redfish. You're gonna show us how it's done. Yes, and, and most of the time when you're submitting your fish, you have a unique identifier code that's released the night before the tournament. So that way nobody's fishing beforehand and like submitting fish, but that's what's going to identify you in those tournaments. Nice. So cool deal. Let's Let's go go check it out. Them. Yes, sir. Yeah, we're over here around some little spoil islands out here in Laguna Madre. Um, we're kind of focusing on the boat channels that run parallel with some deeper water until it can warm up a little bit. We got some good sunshine today and uh, we're going to just focus on this deeper water until it warms up a bit more and then we'll be able to focus on the flats. Hopefully they'll move up onto the flats and start eating. All right. Woo! Broke it up! Good fish. Yeah. I'm going to get the, uh, see if I get the net on him. I'm using a Z-Man diesel minnow. Underneath me. Yeah, that's all right. A little <laughs> bit deeper water, I think we had a little bit deeper water, I think we had better a little bit warmer in the deep you know deep channel there. Every time I get him close, he's like, no. Nope. on the board what's important for me to uh to know to get a good uh just talk me through it dustin just to make sure the the nose of the fish is firmly placed on the on the bump portion of the board do i need to take the boat yes. off okay, yes so uh, you cannot take... have a tethering device on the fish what about uh, the lure the lure can be left as long as it's naturally in the fish like you catch it and it's not inhibited and hit it and it's not inhibiting the uh the lay of the fish on the bump now you mentioned that I would have a um, need to have the identifier here yes, sir. on the board. I don't have one, but I know there's a lot of, um, I, th I think a tourney tag is one of them. I think Catch, Catch, the manufacturer of the board makes one that sits right up here. 
A lot of different options, but to get your unique identifier on here. What else do I need to know to do this and make sure that it's that it's not, make sure that this is a legal measurement. The top lobe of the tail needs to be sweeped down onto the board. As if okay. it's off the board, that's gonna be a disqualification. So come in close yes, and sir. Show, show what I'm doing. So as it is right now, that would be disqualified? Yes, sir. Okay, so we're gonna just sweep that down. Sweep it down and get it on the board, yes. Okay, and then I push him forward. Do I need his mouth closed? The mouth, it doesn't matter if the mouth is open or closed as long as the nose is touching the bump. All right, so I'm pushing this guy and he's, it looks like 27 and a half. So what does that mean in terms of the kayak saltwater series? And the slot that we that we use that means he's going to be over slot and, he's over and you're slot. not going to be able to submit him yes, oh <laughs> that's close oh that's still a All great right. tournament redfish here for in texas waters for live weigh-ins yeah. that's a stud All right. well let's just go through this although you know we'd like it to be a what a 27 exactly 26.75 26.75 this fish back in the water to breathe and we're going to take a look at some of these these pictures but I'm going to just make sure before I release them if, if this, this were the tournament uh, come in around here and we're going to we're going to look at the photos and maybe you can critique it you know assuming that I had the, uh, the identifier in there let's take a look so how how does that look? Is that is that what I want to do? The yes, the tail the lower lobe is is on the board and it looks like I am at 27 and a half almost. Yeah, or actually that one's a 27 and a half. And then we look up here. Is it okay that I'm touching the fish? Yes. All you right. can touch the fish as long as it's not covering the spot on the tail. That will be a deduction uh, in the talk of the rules right now. Okay. And then we'll look, if the phone will let me, we'll look up here and you can see that the nose is touching the, the board. So anything else to watch for there? Ah, oh, that looks good to go. All right, so where do people go to sign up for Kayak Saltwater Series and maybe so they can read the regulations themselves and really learn what, what's important in catch photo release tournaments? Oh, uh, you can go to Kayak Saltwater Series. Dot com. Okay. You can also go on Fishing Chaos, um, the app, and sign up through there also. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, the last part of this is uh, it's we've done the catch, we've done the photo. Now we're going to release this beautiful redfish back to where it was from. Um, I'm excited to have caught it, and uh, I'm excited that someone else gets to come out here and catch this fish too. So we'll do a release here and uh, see if we get some others. While we're beached here, after measuring and releasing that fish, um, I wanted to just do a bow to stern, quick bow to stern of each of our rigs. My kayak is a Wilderness Systems Thresher 155. Uh, I really set this one up for doing a lot of trolling uh, for striped bass. I live up in Maryland in the Chesapeake Bay. We got striper and a great way to, to catch them is, is trolling. A uh, very efficient boat with, we have the, uh, that's a three horsepower electric outboard. This is the Torquedo Ultralight 1103, uh, which will get this boat up to a top end speed of 7.6 miles per hour. I tested that. It got that speed when it was empty. Uh, when it's fully loaded like this with all my gear, I get about 7.1 or 7.2. Um, that, you know, that is a really fun thing to do, is, especially when the wind gets up or when the you know, if you have storms going in, to be able to get out of there really quick uh, is, is really nice. What's super nice though for trolling is at four mile an hour, I got a range 
of 35 and a half miles. So I got, you know, almost nine hours of, uh, of just go uh, in, in one battery. The battery is right in here. It's a, it's a lithium battery. It's 11 pounds. It's waterproof. You can see we're getting splashed here pretty good. And uh, I don't worry about it. The whole system. Uh, got some Yak Attack rod holders here. I got the Omega and Omega Pro. I can move that Omega Pro up here to, um, to this lock and load base. And that's then they're in the position to do some trolling. Uh, I got the Humminbird Helix 10 there, and I got the transducer underneath. Um, this is a the OS pod. It's it's underneath there, and uh, I can even you know, even in that little spot, I get good uh, good side imaging. Not getting in here while I'm shallow. But, uh, what else can I tell you? I got the uh, the Yak Power lights here, just so I'm real visible. I got them on the bow and the stern. That whole setup is uh, is powered by a total lithium battery that I keep stored. I'm not going to open it, but it's it's inside the hull. Um, got a little stakeout pole, a little Yak Attack stake stakeout pole, and I use the uh, Yak Attack leverage landing net, and uh, I use all their, their camera mounts as well. So, uh, that's about it for my Thresher 155. Dustin, why don't you take us through your boat? You got a Jackson U-Pick U -pick here. Yeah, I got the U-Pick. It's uh, 12 foot 2 inches long, 35 inches wide. I got it rigged up with the Ultralight 403 AC. So that's a one horsepower as opposed to a three horsepower. And, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, this will go 5.1, 5.2 miles an hour. Uh, great range. Um, probably running about 4 miles an hour. Probably looking at about 28. 28 mile range on that. Lots, um, lots of range to explore. Yes, definitely. When you got to cover water, find fish, you know, it's definitely a big plus for pre-fishing for tournaments. Just like, I mean, it's it's hands down one of the best options out there. But you got a little bit different board there. Show me about your major board. This is the catch carbonate board. It's a little bit uh, lighter. Um, got it tethered there. Keep it uh, keep it locked in. Yeah. <laughs> And then that's the tourney tag. Huh? That's what we were talking about to hold your identifier. Nice. Right there. I also use a Yak Attack uh, a leverage landing net. Great, great product. I use their mounts. And then I also got a pretty sick crate right there from Yak Gadget. Um, holds the tackle. I hold my boxes at an angle. Very easy to access. And then uh, got all your rods loaded up, ready to go. And then the interesting thing is I don't have foot control steering. I got a little tiller control rigged up. <laughs> Nice. That's also a Yak Gadget product. Um, I really didn't want to put it in the this bracket here um, because I want to have that for when I swap it to my other um, kayaks that I control with my foot steering. But and this is just this, a quick option. This push pole right here that goes up here, and that's your steering either you know forward or back. I'm not going to do it because you, you got your motor up. Yes, sir. Nice. Very cool rig. Very quick setup. Very easy. Just something if you want to just swap and go, it's, it's pretty quick. Yes, sir. picked up a nice little Laguna Madre speckled trout slow rolling a chatterbait uh, just gonna put him on the board and see how much he goes Real quick 17 and a quarter inches <laughs> yeah 17 and a quarter nice little fish slammed it slow rolling this on the bottom in this channel edge over here Got a real pretty pattern on him. All right, let him go. Swim away. There he goes. <laughs> cool deal. You know, leaving the door open is why the series is called Kayak Saltwater Series. That leaves the option to add um, events with other species, like the speckled trout, or say like the stripers in the Northeast. You know, it's not just a redfish series. There's going to be options to have other species. Um, targeted for these events so I'm looking forward to all of that all right well we have relocated to a different spot and uh, we got some just ridiculously low tide what's what's going on with how low the tide is man is this is this at all normal not at all normal we had a pretty pretty significant um, 
frontal system come through and uh, once that wind uh, gets a little tick of west to it it likes to push it pushes the tide out um, it's, it's you know it, it happens every time we have a frontal system like this and this this happened to be a pretty strong one so definitely pushed it down a lot lower than normal yep and you think we got a little walking to do we got a little walking to do but hopefully where we get to the hole we're going to the fish are stuck in there nice <laughs> yeah. hope. let's hope so all right pretty blue tail there they are so cool setting and I'm just trying to work there's a grass edge here and I'm just reeling the uh the diesel minnow I got a, it's uh I think it's eight ounce it's the lightest one I got because I want to reel it relatively slow to keep it moving um, but yeah I mean the, I've had as a, a trip as long as 41.8 miles um, with the motor with the 915 one hour battery that was up on the Chesapeake Bay. Um, but we don't, you know, we don't stop using these things. It's still a paddle sport, and in particular, um, when we come up on grass, grass is so important out here. I've fished a lot of different places from the Chesapeake up into New England and down in the Carolinas and Florida, and the one thing that that I see is a is a constant. If you're in a good area that has a lot of fish, there's grass. So when you come shallow with these motors, we always lift them up. You know, get them up and just paddle through it. That way you you preserve the grass. Mullet jumping there. Um, keep the grass alive and you don't scar it up because uh, these motors are powerful and they will scar it up. So. Protect, you know, protect the resources and, and protect the, the health of the fishery by protecting the grass. And, uh, get that motor up and paddle through. So we're zooming back up to the top. I've marked each of those fish that I've caught, and uh, we're just going to get up wind of it and uh, drift back down through there. Yes. I think that's as big of a trout as I've caught. Every last fish that I've caught has been on this Houdini colored diesel minnow with that trout eye in gold. Everything's eating that. You know, sometimes it's have a bait that's working for you and let's see if I can this thing has shoulders man beautiful heavy fish check him out what do you think he is lengthwise 
22 and a half. <laughs> there. You're close. He's 22, let's say 22 and a quarter. Nope, he's not touching. He's 22 though. Cool. I'll call that a personal best speckle trap for me. Yep. Very cool. I'm gonna take a quick picture. You're really looking at me, aren't you? Yeah. I'll let you go. Man. All right, just got my personal best speckled trout at 22 inches. And uh, I don't know, what's the weight on that? It's, uh, it's a little over four pounder. So everything I've caught today has been on this, this uh, Houdini colored diesel, diesel minnow in that um, I think it's it's either eighth or quarter um, trout eye jig head uh, by Z-Man. It's also on this St. Croix Legend Extreme, super sensitive. It's got the uh, the carbon fiber guides. You know, I've felt everything and you know every little hit, and some of them have been very subtle hits. So we'll go ahead and release this guy, and. Uh, That'll be a good good memory for my trip to Texas with Dustin Nichols. There he goes. All right, Dustin, I appreciate you you hosting me and yes, teaching sir. me a little bit about the kayak saltwater series and catch photo release out here. Um, can you tell folks who are watching how can they they get involved in the kayak saltwater series and start competing? Yeah, there's how does that uh, work? you're going to sign up um, to get a membership. Um, there's a free membership that's just kind of sit back and and uh, just observe and kind of watch everything go on and everything. You get some a sticker or two, right? And then there's the um, ambassador and then the premium memberships. Those will get you with membership to be able to join into this to the monthly challenges um in your regions and then the live events also nice and they also come with uh the ambassador will get a 25 dollar and the premium will get a 35 dollar um gift certificate to fish usa so nice. you, you basically almost get your money back um after your membership fees um you can go check it out uh, kayak saltwater series.com and the facebook page check it out get the rest of the info cool appreciate it man cool deal yes sir